Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG Ingwen. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haowen. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们西平方的节目 NG Ingwen。我是 Angela. We have a great show for you today with our good friend EJ, who's known around the Taiwanese community as Su EJ. 是的，今天我们非常幸运的邀请到了 Kazu Craft 跟暗系纸人聚落。Asset Lab 的创办人 EJ 来到我们的 NG 英文节目，跟大家分享他的艺术生活，跟他一路走来呢学外语的心路历程。But before we get to our interview with EJ and I, Angela is going to break down some of the cultural differences EJ spoke about, particularly about his time in the UK, where he was comparing British English to American English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it away, Angela, on NG 英文。好的，没问题 ，John， 谢谢你的介绍。那没有错，今天呢，我们要来跟各位比较比较英式英文和美式英文在用字上面的差别哦。那现在就请大家赶快把 NG c h e e Sheet 这个 NG 英文专属的笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。在待会的访谈中呢，我们会听到 EJ 说啊，他因为本来学的英文体系都是偏美式，所以刚搬到英国的时候其实蛮痛苦的、哦。很多这个英国的用词用法跟他们的英国口音都听不太懂，尤其呢，如果又遇到英国北部来的朋友，像 Newcastle， 甚至是更北的 Scotland 苏格兰，哇，他们讲话的口音又更难懂了。不过呢，大家也别太担心，如果英文本来就已经有个底，只是文化适应上的问题的话，其实只需要一些时间，基本上是不太会有什么太大的问题啦。不用紧张，不用紧张。好，那既然 E J 他是制鞋职人，我们就来比较一些常见鞋款的英式说法跟美式说法有什么不同吧。一般我们常穿的布鞋、球鞋，美式英文的话，通常用 sneakers 来表示 sneakers， 或者更口语一点的话，也可以说 kicks kicks。那在英国的话呢，要怎么讲啊？一般比较常听到的是 trainers trainers。不过，因为 trainers 在美国指的是健身房里面训练你的教练哦，所以有时候会让人搞混，不太清楚你是在讲健身房的 trainer 健身教练，还是说脚上穿的 trainer 脚上穿的布鞋球鞋。那或者我们也可以用 pumps 来表达 pumps， 但是你知道吗？ pumps 在美国其实也有高跟鞋的意思哦。天哪，这也太折磨人了，怎么这么多不一样的意思啊？没关系，大家不用担心，只要从前后文判断，你就可以大概知道对方要表达的是哪一种鞋。而且再说，你现在也知道他们各个代表的意思了，不怕以后不知道。那再来一个下雨天最爱穿的雨靴，在英国也有不同的说法哦。因为这种鞋款最开始是十九世纪英国威灵顿 （Wellington） 的第一位公爵所带起的风潮，所以后来呢，大家就把这种雨靴叫做 Wellington Boots， 或是直接就简称 Wellies。Wellies， 那在美国的话就简单多了，跟我们中文雨靴一样，因为是下雨天穿的靴子，所以就叫做 rain boots。rain boots。好啦，那希望刚才讲的这些对你的英文学习之路有所帮助。如果有漏掉没有听到，或是写下来的也不用担心，可以上我们的 YouTube 频道，随时要听几次就给他听几次。那如果大家都已经准备好了的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容，听听 EJ 他的分享吧。All right, all right, all right. As always, thank you, Miss Angela Ma, for that wonderful NG Ingwen breakdown. Today, our guest on NG Ingwen is a Taiwanese shoemaker. Yes, shoemaker, super cool. Musician, event organizer, and so much more. So, everyone, please welcome my good friend EJ. Hello. What's up, brother? Such a pleasure.、Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, man. You know, it's been so wonderful to kind of follow along with your life recently, and you've been playing a lot of music, guitar and bass, and you just finished a show on New Year's. Is that right? 访谈开始，这样提到 EJ， 他最近常都在玩音乐，在弹吉他、弹贝斯哦，而且跨年的时候还办了一场音乐表演。EJ 说啊，他跟他工作室的伙伴呢，偶尔都会筹划，会 organize 一些活动哦。那这次跨年很幸运的有他一些也在玩音乐的朋友愿意跟他一起演出，所以后来就在一个 rooftop， 在一个这个屋顶上呢，为他的朋友们办了一场音乐表演。那我们赶快进入今天的内容，认识认识这位 EJ 吧。Yeah, that's like me and people in my community, mostly from my art studio. We organize events. 
uh, once a while, and this is this time is for New Year's Eve. And luckily, I also have some musician friends. They would love to, you know, we like to play music with me. So we just had a show during the events at the rooftop. Yeah, rooftop New Year's party, man. That that sounds like that sounds like everything a musician needs. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, yeah I'm happy dude. with that. That's so cool. So, what I love so much about you is you do so many different things here in Taiwan. But one of them is you've kind of been a, a hand in creating an artist collective ca- called Acid Lab. Can you explain a little bit about this? 前面我们讲到 EJ 他会玩音乐，在跨年夜的时候帮大家做了一场精彩的音乐演出。但其实你知道吗？他在台北木栅还有创了一个 co-working space， 一个最近几年很夯的共同工作空间呢、哦，叫做暗系职人聚落 Acid Lab。那如果你刚好也是住在木栅附近的听众朋友，说不定有听过，甚至是去过这隐身巷弄的世外桃源哦。那这是什么样的一个工作空间嘞？以及说一起在这边工作的人会共同分担租金，可以决定想要在自己的工作室里面做什么。像他个人呢，就是设计制作一些手工皮鞋，那其他人有的会手做这个珠宝首饰啦，或是皮件皮包，甚至是这个陶瓷品等等哦。大家彼此分享空间，分享意见想法，几乎可以说是这个 collective lifestyle， 就是大家住在一起。他说：“现在他们那边大概有八间工作室了，那也会有一些 assistants， 一些助理啊，或是 apprentice 这个学徒在那边，所以有时候也是蛮热闹、蛮忙的、哦，就像一个大家庭一样。那我们话不多说，现在就来听听 EJ 他的分享吧。呃、uh, ，Yeah， Acid Lab is the name of our studio. It's basically more like a co-working space for people to, you know, share the cost of rent of how whatever you want to do in your studio.” But mostly, we work with our hands, like making myself making shoes and other artists making jewelry, leather bags, even ceramics, and just sharing space and really sharing the ideas and living together almost. Yeah, that that collective lifestyle. I love that so much. So, how many artists actually have a residency within the the studio?、Mm, is is. Depends on our space, how we divide the space into. So now I think it's、uh, eight different units, but every unit they also have their own maybe assistants or printers. So it's sometimes it could be very busy and just like a family. <laughs> yeah, man, that is such a great spot. That's coming up now. Is that three years? Three year, maybe more now. 上段我们聊到 EJ 他在木栅的工作室，那接下来他会说到，这从创立到现在也好一段时间了，大概在 the end of February， 在二月底的时候嘞，就差不多四年了。而且他说之前有一天在看照片，还突然看到了这样在他们之前开幕当天的照片哦，两个人就开始在录音室忆当年起来了。这样说，他记得当时候那个咖啡厅啊还在盖而已，现在已经 alive and well， 已经营业的很好，很多人光顾了。那一直也提到啊，这几年咖啡厅，甚至是他们的这个工作空间呢，来来去去的人真的不少，充满了很多很特别的回忆。对他来讲，不只是工作地方，同时呢，也像一个家了。Yeah, it's almost four years at the end of February. And you know what? The other day I was checking, just randomly checking the photos. I saw you in the photo in our the opening. Yeah, yeah, man, I remember、yeah. opening. I think it was a、uh, yeah. I totally remember in Muta. Yeah, yeah. And、uh, and I think there was a a cafe that was being built at yeah, the time. Yeah, and now yeah, that's yeah. that's alive and well, right? Yeah, it's still the cafe. Just like different people. Also, the residents show artists. They almost every year change like one or two. Some people leave. Some people come. Some people go to different countries, or some other people from different countries just showing like that. Yeah, so it's really full of like very special memories, and really not just a place where I work. It really means so much, like a home to me. Yeah, I think I think that's such a special thing, and and something I hope more people can learn about because the kind of idea of collective workspaces is、mm. is such a worldwide concept, and、mm-hmm. and I feel you know with all these new like we works and these types of things, you know,、mm. when you focus on actually art. In a sense, it's a wonderful collaborative process. Yeah, totally. So within that studio, kind of everything that you are doing is primarily around shoemaking. 
which I think is such a dope art form. <laughs> thank you. Because, dude, you are just making these incredibly beautiful oh, and so elegant mm. sty- and stylish shoes for men and women. Mm. So that is, uh, is it Kazu Craft? 访谈前面我们有提到 ，EJ 他在这个工作室里面主要是在制作手工皮鞋哦。他品牌叫做 Casual Craft。Casual 其实是他之前在日本做学徒的时候他老师的名字。那为了要 honor， 要表示对老师的尊敬呢，就决定用他的名字来命名。哎，那这个 EJ 他制鞋的过程是怎么进行的嘞？他要先把所有材料都准备好吗？还是要先找到客户？ EJ 说，他是在2014年的时候在伦敦开始的。本来只是一个很简单的想法，想说，哎，他只需要一个小小的空间，然后把 materials， 把这个材料跟 tools 跟工具准备好，这样子应该就可以了。而且他是手工做的，也不用什么特别的工具啊、机器。所以之后就这样子踏上了这段手工制鞋之旅。Yeah, it's called a casual craft, and casual the name is the name of my teacher in Japan. So it's more like honor to him to to name this、uh, project. Wow,、yeah. oh, that is that is so respectful. I love that. So, what exactly goes into kind of your shoemaking process? Do you have to gather all the materials, or or do you find a client first, or how does that work?、Mm, I think it. I I actually started to do this in London back in 2014, and. At the beginning, it's a simple idea that I I learned shoemaking in Japan, of course, and but I just think, oh, I can have a tiny space and getting materials, getting the tools, I can start because it's all handmade. So for me, it's not. I don't need lots of specific like two special machines. Then I can still do it by myself. So I just start to do it like about five, almost six years ago. Yeah, man, I, I, that's awesome. But. Getting into that kind of art form is a very unique and almost rare talent these days, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it, it is pretty rare that when I tell people I make shoes, they're like, "Huh? Really?" <laughs> the reaction is always so so interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, where where did that inspiration come from to get into shoemaking? Now we're going to ask EJ, how did he get into shoemaking? Where did that inspiration come from? Where did that inspiration come from? 他说，他一直以来对于时尚都相当有兴趣。以前二十几岁年轻小伙子的时候，是比较在做 street wear 这个街头时尚的设计，但那时候也不是说多认真、多拼命在做，只是有兴趣好玩而已 ，nothing too serious。但是也因为这样子呢，让 EJ 学到很多经验。那后来也不知道为什么，就觉得跟时尚比起来，他好像对于手工艺，对于这个。Craftsmanship 比较有兴趣，变得比较喜欢一个东西，它整个制作过程的细节，所以后来就变得越来越爱手工艺。赶快来听听他的分享吧。嗯、mm, ，I think I I'm almost always a fashion victim, fashion lover. You know, I'm <laughs> definitely de- definitely always into fashion since I like teenager, and I started like a streetwear fashion brand. In my early twenties, with with some friends, then that's more like just a fun thing to do, not nothing too serious.、Mm-hmm. But through that, I I learn my experience, and I somehow compare with the fashion sense. I'm more into the the craftsmanship, more like into the details of how the sh- the item being made. Then I sw- kind of switch from my love from fashion to into more like art and handicraft, this kind of thing. That's a, a nice honor again to kind of the Japanese tradition of of details and fine tuning and craftsmanship. So、mm. that's a really wonderful honor that you have named your company now after your your master, your teacher. Yeah, yeah, I really I'm really grateful for for that. Beautiful man. So if you don't mind, can we transition a little bit into your your incredible English skills? So where did your language journey begin? 那访谈进行到这边，相信大家也已经开始好奇 ，EJ 他是怎么学英文，或是什么时候开始学的、啊？他说他英文基础也是在台湾学的啦，但因为想要去真正使用这个语言，他就听很多英文歌，读很多歌词等等哦，去了解说，哎，他喜欢的这些歌手啊，他们在唱这些歌的时候，那些动力，他们的 motivation， 跟他们的用词或是在描述的事情又是什么？ 
，而且呢，他也会把歌词写下来哦，去弄懂整首歌的意思。有时候还会真的学到一些让他可以感同身受的字诶。那一直也提到说啊，透过这样的方式学英文，也能够帮助他更认识歌手，更了解他唱这首歌的心情。那如果也是喜欢西洋歌曲的听众朋友，或许也可以试试这一种读歌词的学习方式哦。Hmm,、嗯、I I would say my foundation of this language is still sort of start definitely from the education I got in this country, but、uh, to be more really、uh, flexibly, you want to use the language as as also use the language in your personality.、Mm -hmm. That needs、uh, another definitely start when when I really want to learn the language, I will check like my favorite songs or my favorite musicians. I'm Really want to know when they playing this music, what kind of the, what's the motivation, what kind of things they're describing, and I will just see all those lyrics and really write them down. Try to understand what does that mean, and sometimes it really bring bring something amazing to me. Like learning the language through that is also another level to get to know the artist. What's The artists in in their minds, and that's something、yeah. really beautiful to me. Yeah, I think I think I'm such a lyric. Lyric lover, so, <laughs> so you know what <laughs> yeah, I totally <laughs> know. And and when、yeah. you can feel those emotions,、mm, you know it's not、definitely. just a word anymore. And、exactly. you're like, oh my goodness, you、yeah. you you get the whole, you paint the picture really yeah, yeah. what the artist was yeah, expressing,、totally. and that's wonderful. So as you have developed now your language, do you use English primarily now in your business with shoemaking, or do you still have to transition often through many languages? 接下来我们要来问问 EJ， 他主要是用英文来经营这个手工皮鞋事业吗 ？Do you use English primarily in your business？ 还是说会需要在不同语言之间做转换呢？他说，因为在台湾呢、啊，所以当然主要是用台语或是中文来沟通。但是雷在跟他的艺术圈朋友交流的时候，大多还是用英文啦，因为毕竟他们虽然很多都是 based in Taipei， 是在这个驻台北哦。但是都来自很多不同国家，所以会英文真的是一个很有用的技能，因为你可以跟各国的人沟通交流。像有时候他会需要帮他们筹划一些活动，那会英文的话就可以知道他们在这场活动到底需要的是什么，或是真的去明白他们这些艺术家、这些音乐人他们的创作和设计理念。嗯、mm, ，I still, uh, my business still based in Taipei, so I'm mostly using still Mandarin. Or like Taiwanese with the you know、mm, manufacturer,、yeah. but English mostly in using. It's more like in my community, like maybe meeting my art friends or some musician friends. Lots of them they are maybe located in like based in Taipei, but they from different countries, and that's a very useful skill and tool if you can really communicate with them. Because I also do curating. Events for my artists and musician friends sometimes, and you want to have, you want to really know what they need. You re really want to know what inspires them and try to dig out the best of them. Yeah, man, I I love that, and and like I said, this is so much what I love about you because you care so much, and because you care so much, I feel you are trying often to communicate in whatever language someone feels the most comfortable in, and so now that is English, Taiwanese. Mandarin Chinese and <laughs> and probably so much more British English and, and Japanese. <laughs> and Japanese, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you do that, I think, from the pure spot in your heart, and and I love that so much. So you have kind of just shared some tips with us, you know, music、mm. and lyrics.、Mm. But is there anything else that has really helped you when you were a younger learner of the language? 那前面其实我们已经有稍微提到 ，EJ 他以前学英文的时候，尝试透过英文歌，透过这个读歌词哦，来增加练习。不过他英文真的是太溜了，让 John 忍不住想要再来问问他有没有其他方式，也是有帮助到他学英文的呢 ？EJ 说啊，他学一个语言的态度，主要是着重在真的跟对方沟通哦，所以几乎都会比较想要学如何 efficiently， 如何有效的跟人家沟通。有时候呢，不一定是要从教科书里面去学啦，因为书上的可能会比较正式一点，比较不那么实用。但如果你从真实生活绘画去学呢，可以学到很多年轻人会用到，或是生活中比较实用的英文用法。总而言之呢，一杰说啊，他觉得真的去跟母语人士讲话是一个学语言很重要，而且必须要跨出的一大步。
。那我们赶快来听听这段实用的英文学习分享吧。I think my attitude on learning languages is mostly focused on how to really communicate with people. So I would rather always, almost always, rather to learn something more you can really communicate efficiently.、Mm. Sometimes it's not necessary learn from a very could be like things from the textbook. It's, it sometimes could be very formally used, but some of the really like cool slang or really what young people communicate to each other. I think there are so much to learn through the real conversation you can、mm-hmm. have with people, and getting to talk to people is definitely a big step to learn the language, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Do you feel you were always confident to open up conversation with? With foreigners, let's say, as you began、um, learning English. 听了这么多 EJ 他不吝啬的英文学习分享之后，相信大家也有发现，他讲英文真的是一点都不紧张害怕，反而很有自信呢，很能够跟 John 侃侃而谈。那他是一直都这么有自信，可以跟外国人交谈吗？他说：“当然不是啦，一开始当然会很害羞啊，不想要犯错，让自己出糗，好像很蠢很笨这样子。但他觉得学语言的时候就不要管那么多啦，放掉一些面子是 essential， 是很重要、很必要的，就放手让自己去试试看，就 give it a go， 放松 chill 就对了。No， definitely not. I think at the beginning is pretty normal that you will feel too shy because you don't want to make mistake. You don't want to make yourself look stupid,、mm-hmm. but I think it is totally、uh, essential. I almost to really don't care that much about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really need to just give it a go and being chill. I think being chill is really important. You don't have to be nervous on on speaking another language. It's just like foreigners in in Taiwan when they speak. Chinese maybe have an accent, and you will find that's cute. That's that's <laughs> nice.、So、I think it's okay. Yeah, yeah man, I I love your attitude of of chill, and that is really a wonderful because <laughs> that is who you are. You are so chill, and and so yeah, having that attitude of hey man, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's my attitude. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love it. So you were saying a lot of your. Earlier days, as you were beginning to explore more art and music,、mm. you lived in London. So, was there a big difference you felt now between American English and British English? 我们在前面有提到 EJ 他曾经住英国，不过因为他学英文的过程大多都是以美式英文为主，所以现在要来问问他有没有遇过什么样的文化差异，或是一些用字上的不同啊？他说：“刚刚搬到英国的时候，的确很不容易哦。说他 struggled a lot， 吃了很多苦，因为很多英式英文的用法跟他以前所学的美式英文都很不一样。不只是英国人的用字，还有他们的英式发音也是跟美式完全不一样，很不容易懂。特别是如果是 Scotland 是苏格兰来的话，哇，他们讲话口音又更难懂了。” John 说，他们家族其实就是苏格兰来的。有时候听一些亲戚讲话，也是让他一头雾水，不飒飒哦。我们赶快听听这段有趣的分享吧。嗯、um, ，I think at the beginning when I just moved to the UK, I definitely struggle a lot because everything I learned from and anything about English is always American English. So they the local people use lots of terms, even not just the terms might be the accent that just totally always confuse me for. For for a long time, yeah, that's absolutely right. And the 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 kind of slang, you know, that maybe in the north part, like Newcastle or something like、mm-hmm. that, will use something completely different from from the south. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's such an interesting thing. Yeah, Is especially there... people from Scot、uh, Scotland. They oh have yeah, really <laughs> strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this, that's actually my blood is is very Scottish, and、uh, and from、oh. the north. I remember hearing some of my my relatives, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I'm grateful. My, my. <laughs> yeah, I'm grateful that I have a, a an understanding of British、mm-hmm. English and American、yeah. English. But that's so fun. So unfortunately, my man. We are kind of wrapping up here on Ng Ingwen,、mm. so thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, but if you could go back now and、mm. talk to a younger EJ,、mm-hmm. would there be any advice you give yourself about language or life? 如果 EJ 可以回到过去跟小时候或是年轻时候的自己说说话，有没有什么建议想要给小 EJ 呢？他说希望跟当时在伦敦的自己说，你已经做得很好了。虽然你现在可能会很担心未来，担心自己是不是有办法可以 handle、可以处理这一切哦，但真的
，你很棒，做得很好了，不要担心，你会没事的。Mm, I think I'm definitely really happy with the the decision I I made in my life point. But if I can have a chance to go back to talk to myself back in in London, I think I would tell myself like, "Hey man, you you're doing a good job. You don't have to worry about like maybe maybe you you are worried about your future. You don't know if you can handle this." But I just want to like encourage myself again. It's like, hey, you're doing right. Don't don't worry. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I think、uh, it's it's a wonderful thing that we get caught up in life sometimes a little bit. But to have that perspective of, hey, man, look how far look how far you've been,、mm. and and you can keep going. Yeah. And I love that perspective about you. And I'm so glad that we could. Kind of make this time tonight. Yeah,、so. thanks, man. So thanks again. So where can people find、uh, your work, your artwork? Maybe、mm. Acid Lab page, or especially your shoes. How can people maybe find your shoes and、yeah. buy your shoes?、Uh, my shoes, you can easily find. Like if you check Kazuo Craft. craft okay. How K- do we spell? Yeah. K A Z U O and Craft C R A F T. Beautiful.、Um, The Google page, you you will definitely find our Facebook and Instagram, and we have a store in Mitsukoshi Shingon Sanyue A A. Yeah, the, floor. yeah. the flagship store <laughs> A A. Yeah, yeah A-A. and Asi Lab as well. If you just Google Asi Lab, Anshi Zhiren Juro, you can find our Facebook and you can follow us. We have all different kinds of handmade workshop and events coming up. Beautiful, my man. Well, thank you again for sharing so much of your passion、thank、with you, the world.、Bro. Yeah, such a good time to talk、and、to you. And I hope to see you sooner than later. Yeah, let's make it happen. All right, bro.、Yeah. Hey, happy Chinese New Year, by the way. Yeah, Chinese New Year. All right, Thanks, man. peace. That is our NG Ingwen show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. Don't forget to connect with us on Instagram or Facebook. You can search NG Ingwen, or you can search NG English I C R T. And make sure to tune in each week, Wednesday morning from 6:30 to 7, and Wednesday night from 9 to 9:30. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. 好，那我们今天新平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听，别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线 English 在底线 I C R T。那大家也要记得每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 I C R T 频道。FM 一百准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎大家上网搜寻西平方的工体不备课程，或者是呢到我们西平方的官网多读读一些有关 NG 英文的专栏文章，看看在 NG 英文里面的专栏有没有哪些是大家可以吸收学起来的一些小 paper 哦。我们下次见了，拜拜。